All right, today we're going to go over window installation. Uh, everybody has their own ideas on how to do it, and that's great. Uh, we're going to show you a couple of tips of things we tried here. Um, and however you do it, it should, the end result should be the same, which is windows and doors, they open properly, they're level, uh, they're, you work on a thermal bridging, you eliminate thermal bridging, that you've got insulation between the frame and the rough opening, you're sealed against air leakage, uh, you got drainage laid out, stuff like that. So we'll go over a few of the things that we did to accomplish that. So the outside of your wall should be designed so water can't penetrate, but it's probably going to anyway, so you should also be installing them in a way that if water does get in, it can drain to the exterior, not into your house or into your wall cavity. Our uh, exterior air barrier overlaps to the interior of the rough opening, so we're airtight to this point. We just need to do a good job now on sealing the window to the rough opening. We know our air barrier is intact. Rough openings are made bigger than the window so that you can slip your window in. You've got a bit of room to place them. You normally see windows that are set up on blocks or shims uh, to raise them in position. If you leave those blocks there, they're going to act as a thermal bridge where they can create condensation. One technique to avoid that is to fasten windows into place with, with use if you're using wooden blocks foam on either side of those blocks and then the foam once it sets it's structural it's going to hold it they're screwed down anyway so you can pull those blocks out uh, and then foam in those holes another idea is uh, you can replace those wooden blocks with a piece of insulation foam if you've got it in this case we use small pieces of uh, the leftover Roxel rigid uh, comfort board that worked really great we were able to sort of move them in place uh, it sits on it. It's, it. We didn't have to remove them, um, so we have no thermal bridging and it's already insulation in there. We did use blocking where we had to, like if there's hinges for doors, stuff like that, that we actually did leave the blocking in there. Uh, in which case, though, we've got a really deep window, a really deep wall, so we were able to actually insulate on either side of the blocks in this case, simply because we have a very thick wall, so we were fortunate in that way. When you're shimming windows, out of habit, builders often screw through the shims and then they leave them in there. Um, but if you screw just above or below your shim, you can pull them out because they're not needed. You leave the shims in there, they're going to act as a thermal bridge, first of all. It's wood, not insulation. Um, but it also can lead to, that, that can lead to condensation. But also, they're usually wet when you buy them and install them, but they're going to dry and then they're going to shrink. So now you've got an air gap for air leakage as well. So, if you can, get the shims out of there. They serve no purpose once the window is fastened. Next, you insulate between the frame and the rough opening. Again, there's more than one way to do this. Uh, if you're using spray foam, be sure you use a uh, low expanding foam. It won't deform the frames. It'll usually say like window and door on it, low expansion. Fiberglass insulation works fine, but if you compress it, it actually loses its R value. So you've got to be a bit more careful with it. Here we're using uh, Roxel. Again, we've got it laying around. We used it in the walls. Any of these three materials, foam included, they'll act as an insulation, but not necessarily an air barrier. Uh, spray foam is often counted on to stop air leakage. It will do that at first, but houses shift. They move. Uh, you can't really avoid that. And anytime you get any shifting with the foam, uh, in our experiences, you're... It just doesn't, there's no play to it. So I've seen a lot of cases where there is air leakage, so not my favorite technique. So if you are using foam, still a good idea uh, with any of these techniques to put, to tape it or caulk afterwards to make sure you're airtight. Speaking of which, we tried two different methods of air sealing uh, to see which was faster, more affordable, which one worked better. Uh, we tried backer rods. Uh, jamming, like insulated first, then putting in a back rod to create a surface for caulking. Uh, we also tried taping the frame to the rough opening. Go with what works for you, but for what it's worth of those two methods, we had a lot better luck with the tape uh, over the caulking. An important part to remember though, after you've put in your insulation, before you go to the effort of sealing it up, make sure the window opens first, uh, that you haven't put too much pressure on it, uh, if you warp the frame at all, you might find that your window binds. So if you set out with these goals of insulating really well between the frames, creating an air seal, and working on moisture penetration, you're going to end up with a window that performs, that lasts longer, and actually uh, performs better. <laughs>